Hi everyone, today I'm creating colour swatches for my Prismacolor Premier coloured pencils. This one's a pack of 48. For my swatches, I have decided to put them onto little squares sized 10 centimeters by 8.8 centimeters, and that's because I wanted to fit them into these plastic sleeves. So these have six pockets and they are sized 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters by 9.5 centimeters. I did this height wise just a little bit shorter because I thought it fit into the pocket a lot neater that way. That's what it would look like inside the pockets. This right here is how I will organize each swatch. In deciding how I wanted to create my swatches, I took inspiration from both YouTubers and also the information in this book right here. The author of this book creates her color swatches by including four different rows and three columns. I edited my color swatch a little bit to match what I personally would want to include and see in a color swatch. So I removed one of the rows purely because I didn't think it was relevant to what I wanted to do. I also included a third box and that's where I will include a swatch of a gradient. As for the rest of these, in this column I will put a light pencil pressure covering, in the second column I will put a medium pencil pressure covering, third one you know is a gradient and the fourth one is just me pressing hard on all of them to get the darkest colour. In the first row that will just be pencil alone, in the second row I will be using a mineral spirit to blend the colour pencil out and in the third row I will be using a white colour pencil to blend the pencil out. Other information that I will be including comes from the book. So the first thing you always need to put in there is what the pencil brand is. Then down here the colour name, the base as in is it oil or wax based, and the light fastness rating. This is something that I haven't seen YouTubers do which is surprising to me because or maybe it isn't surprising, maybe it just isn't important to them, but it's very important for me to know what the light fastness rating is of each pencil, so I will be including them in the colour swatches. I think I should just mention that this idea of putting a light pressure box, a medium pressure box and a dark pressure box comes from other YouTubers as well as this book, but the idea of using a mineral spirit to blend out comes from this book alone, I haven't seen it anywhere else. Blending out with a white pencil, I've seen other YouTubers do that as well, so I don't think that's really unique to this book. One more thing before I get into doing the colour swatches, these plastic sleeves are archival and acid free. That's a good thing because it shouldn't affect the quality of the colour swatch over time. If you don't have something that is archival or acid free, you might find that your colour swatches wear away much quicker over time. The link to these will be in the description. Now we can finally get into creating our swatches. First of all, I would recommend using the same paper to do the swatches on that you would use to create your drawings in the first place. That's just because if you create your swatches on a different kind of paper, it may not represent how it's going to look on the actual paper you'll use. So I'm using the Bristol Board by Frisk. To make things easier on myself, I have already cut out a template which is 10 centimeters by 8.8 centimeters, and then I'm going to draw around it. So I'm going to take out two sheets at a time and that's because that's how much my guillotine board can cut at one time and also when you take it off you should find that the papers stick together so when I'm cutting on the guillotine board it should stay perfectly still and I should be able to get even cuttings on both pages. Oops. Once you have all of your pieces cut out, we then need to create a template. So with the template, we are going to draw out this onto here, and then we're going to use a craft knife to cut out the little rectangle sections. With the template, we can then place it on top of the card we want to draw on, 
and then just draw around the cutout rectangle pieces and that will be much quicker than measuring things out on each piece with a ruler and drawing it out. When you're creating the template I would recommend using card because if you don't you might find that when you are drawing around the line of the cutout your pen or pencil may slip out onto the template and that would just be quite annoying. For the measurements I'm going to begin by marking a centimetre in and then down here I'll mark a centimetre in as well. Then I'm going to mark centimeter down and over here as well I'm going to draw a line across the top and then down where I've made these marks I'm going to line the ruler up and I'm going to make sure that the zero mark of the ruler lines up with this top line. And then I'm going to measure down 1.5 centimeter, mark it off, five millimeters, mark it off. So that's the height of the rectangle. And then this gap here is just the, well, it's the gap. And then we have 1.5 again, and then five millimeters, 1.5. Then I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing. Okay. Then I'm going to connect the lines. Something that I forgot to do is measure across by eight centimeters. I should have mentioned that before. But eight centimeters is the perfect length because then we're going to divide this long rectangle into two centimeters each time. So two, 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 and that will give us four equal squares. Of course, if you don't want to have a gradient box or if you just don't want to have as many boxes as I have, you can always adapt your colour swatch template. Alright, so once we have that, we're going to cut it out with a craft knife. I'm not going to draw in these lines because that's obviously going to come out with the box. Instead, I'll just draw them in with every colour swatch. I don't think it will take that long if I'm honest because all I'll do is measure out the two centimeters on the top box, measure it out on the bottom box or rectangle, whatever, and then just connect the lines across the three rows. The template that I made creates just the most awful lines and that is because I didn't have the best materials to make it. If you have decent materials or you just don't care if the lines are imperfect, you can go ahead and use the template but I'm just going to do it the harder way by drawing it out. There goes nothing.
Finally, I'm going to start filling in the boxes. These three will be done with light pressure, these three medium pressure, these three a gradient, and these three with the hardest pressure. I'm going to be using a solvent on the second row. I'm going to be using distilled turpentine and I'll be applying it with cotton buds. I'm just going to take the lid off and pour a small amount into the lid. I'm going to do it over a tissue because I always spill. It's really important that you don't saturate the cotton bud with turpentine. A small amount is all you need anymore and you might end up finding that you make a mess on the paper and the pigment just doesn't blend very well. So what I like to do is dip a really small amount in and once that's dipped in, I then take some tissue and dab off the excess. I might even have just a bit too much on there and then whatever's remaining, I use it to blend out. Here we go. I might still have a bit too much on, I'm not sure. See, I could have gotten away with even less turpentine than that on the cotton bud. Because a lot of the darkness that's coming from this, I can tell, is just because the paper is wet. So now I'm going to go to the second box, do the same thing. And now that there's less turpentine on the cotton bud, I can see a truer representation of the yellow colour. And with this one, Maybe I should have done the gradient one first. I'm just going to wipe off some of the cotton bud so that the yellow doesn't interfere with the lighter tone. Oops, not that one. The lighter tone down here. And here we go. Finally, we do this one. I think it's harder to see what the turpentine is doing with the yellow colour, so I'll show you another example. I just want to make a note on the side. So this one up here is pencil only. This one is a solvent and this one is going to be a white pencil. I'm now going to take the white Prismacolor pencil and I'm going to blend out this bottom row 